guys, it's Putin Plum here, and today I've got, you know, kind of a nifty video. I've not really done anything on OMSI 2 before, but I've got, you know, a fairly nifty nifty tutorial on how to sort of, you know, start up the game and sort of tell you guys what to do. So, before we start, I just want to clarify that I did, I did buy the game from Steam. I got it from the G2A, G2A website, which I'm going to leave a link in the description below if you want to go and check it out. It is cheaper if you get it on G2A. You could possibly get it cheaper in one of the Steam sales, but I believe standard it's around £20 UK, but yeah, I think the prices may vary from country to country. But yeah, so I just want to start by saying, guys, this is a fairly indie game, so if you're finding it a bit sort of awkward to play, you know, the aim of the game isn't to sort of like set up your own big company or anything. It almost, it feels a bit like a sandbox, but you can sort of treat it. It depends how you go about it, but yeah. I believe it was a game made by a couple of t people in Germany, so yeah, it's meant to be fairly indie, guys, so if there's a few bugs, and it, and it does seem to crash sometimes, and there are quite a few bugs in it, but yeah, once you get a few mods and a few maps in it, and once you start learning the way of the game, it does get pretty interesting. So yeah, I'm going to first start off with the menu. So I just loaded up the first map, and I believe I'm at the um, locations at the bottom of the list on the Berlin map, and I just, you know, spawned in a bus, you know, fairly standard. So if you want to spawn in a bus, guys, what you want to do is, I believe when you first load up the game, you spawn with one, but if you want to get one, you just click on this button here. Sometimes you can get that button. All I've noticed is that the preview just doesn't work. And the bus I'm going to be using, once it loads, is the, um, it's the man, it's here yeah, that I'm going to use the man manufacturer, and it's this one here, this SD202-D92, with the beige appearance. So yeah, that's the one I'm going to be using, guys, for the video. And yeah, I'm just going to get into a few basic controls before I sort of show you how to set up a bus link and a route and everything like that. But I think I'm going to show you the, the um, bus routing on a different map, just to make life a little bit easier for you guys. So first things what you want to do is you're going to start off in this sort of format. You're going to want to hold, well, if you have a laptop like me and you have no sort of numpads, yeah. I just thought before I start, guys, I do have a laptop, so I have had to jumble controls around a little bit. So if I quote the controls wrong, I do apologise, but if you want to change them, you can go into the keyboard section. I'm just going to slowly go down, if you want, and if you want to pause the video at any time to sort of see what I, I have my controls set up. Uh, feel free, but yeah, I'm just going to quickly run through them. So yeah, that's my controls. A lot of them are unbound, like all the um, kind of num keys I don't really use, or anything like that, of course. Strictly for the fact that my laptop does not have a numpad, and I have no external keyboard currently. So yeah, just getting started there, what you're going to want to do is press the F1 key, and then you'll, uh, you'll teleport into the cockpit. Now you can press middle mouse button, and it allows you to... Well, it is by default anyway, and you can then move around the cabin, look around, you know, see what's going on. So, I believe your active schedule tends to show up in several locations, so it can show up here, can sometimes show up sort of down here maybe, and up here, and even some sometimes on here actually, not like here, but yeah, that's when you get into the scheduling and sort of when and where you have to be. So, if you press the C key by default, you will then, you know, sort of it'll teleport you into the default position. So what I'm going to show you first is you can click here on this around the steering wheel and it'll make the steering wheel disappear. So you can then look at all your different options. So in the standard buses, you know, some buses do have more than one options, especially if you get custom ones. But on the most basic models, um, a lot of these keys are sort of bound to like a lot of a lot of the things in the bus are bound to different keys rather than just having to use your mouse. So for example, the handbrake, you can do this with the mouse or i believe um i'm not sure what it is by default but i set it to the full stop key so as you can see i'm not clicking it my mouse is over here and the full stop key is changing it so i'm gonna keep it on for now and the first things first to start your bus is you're gonna want to um, press down on this sort of thing here and you'll notice everything will start turning on now the, you turn the electricity on, on the bus Turning it up, or pushing it up, or pulling it up rather, will turn the electricity off. And you can turn it in different position to set it if you want the lights on or off. I believe this button here is a fog light. So as, as you can see, if I turn this on and then press, press the F3 key to look on the back of the button, as you can see, the fog light has now come on there. So yeah, that, that's what that does. These are your hazard lights, I believe. Um, the indicators, I'm not sure what they are by default, but I set mine to E and Q. 
and Y to set them back into the neutral position. And now the door control, this is quite interesting. Now you won't be able to do anything with the bus while the doors are unlocked. So you press this button, press this to pull it up. And then you can then press these two buttons to then open and close both of the doors. So as you can see, if I press this down to lock them again, I can then no longer interact with the buttons. So this has to be up to be able to interact with the buttons. But bearing in mind, you, while this is up, it will, you know, stop you being able to drive. I believe this is the session pauser, at least as far as I can tell. It doesn't do anything except for the fact that you can no longer use the accelerator or throttle anymore. And these are your engine start and stop keys. But before we get into that, I'm just going to get into what this is all about. And now bear in mind, guys, with this tutorial, there is obviously a lot more things you can do in the game. I'm just going to give you a sort of basic insight on how to set up your route and how to get your bus you know, up and rolling and all that kind of thing. I believe this is the air conditioning, so you can set it at different points depending on how hot or, hot or cold it is. Now, something quite helpful I like to do if, is if you hold the shift key and press Y, it brings up this kind of menu type thing. So as you can see, it tells you your speed, the day, the date, the time, and the climate. So as you can see, it's 15 degrees. So I think when it's a day like this, I just normally sort of keep them fairly in the middle, all these levers, and it will keep people happy and sort of something complaining it's either too hot or the humidity is too high or it's too cold or anything like that. So just keep them all in the middle if you want to keep people happy on a relatively mild day like this now you could if you um hold the right mouse button it then means that you can then zoom in and out so if you want to zoom in like quite far on what all these buttons do you can definitely do that now the ticket system now i haven't really found a use for the ticket system yet because i haven't really played around with it too much but i believe the general gist of it is as well as the people will, you know, sort of come in, give you money, and then you see you print off the ticket they get, which, unfortunately, I'm not really going to be able to demonstrate in this video for you guys. So if you wanted to, to look at that, you will have to look at another video. But, yeah. Um, generally, the whole gist is people will give you money, then you have to give print off what ticket they want, and then you will then have to dispense the change for them. And if you have this menu up, it will tell you whether you gave them the right change or the wrong change. Now, you're probably wondering what this big button is here. Well, this isn't actually a button. Um, this will actually light up if someone's pressed the stop button on the bus. So if someone presses stop and wants to get off at the next stop, that will then glow orange. Now, some of the buttons on here, um, a lot of these are just lights. So some are like the cabin lights, some are like the driver's lights, some of the cashier lights. That's the driver's light, for example. Um, some of these, I'm not sure all of them do, I'm going to be honest, but a lot of them you don't really need in your general needs. So this is the front defogger, this is the rear defogger, then you have sort of fans and stuff if it's, like, if it's getting too hot on your bus you can turn those on. You have the buggy lights, which I can see does light that up for some reason, but it's just sort of indicating there's a buggy on the... Um, on the uh, bus. Now this, this is your um, ABS, this is your... Um, I'm going to be honest, I usually I keep this off, because if you're going at some sort of incline, granted your wheels start spinning, but the only problem is, is it just takes the power off. So, unless it's really skiddy and you need it on, I would genuinely just keep that off, but if you've got rows like this, then yeah, I'd just keep it on, just for the simplicity, and yeah. So now what I'm going to get into do is moving the bus and sort of the general controls. So I'm going to bring the steering wheel back, and... For some reason that light um, does stay on if you fiddle around with the button, so I'm just going to turn the electricity off and then on again, and there you go, the systems have now reset. So I'm going to press N to put it in neutral, and then I'm going to hold M, and as you can probably hear by the sounds, the engine has now started. So I can see if I hold the accelerator key, as you can see the engine is now revving, and everything seems to be working, so I'm just going to go to this view and... There you go, we are now producing smoke, and the engine's running happily. So here, obviously, you've got all your gauges, which I'm probably going to show you. So this one, as far as I can tell, is pretty much just your throttle. So how much sort of your rev counter, basically, how many revs the engine is doing at a given time. This is your battery, which, if it's cold and you're trying to continue to turn the engine over, will go down if you're not charging the batteries. But yeah, it's just the voltage of the battery, really. This is your engine temperature. Now, if it's too hot, so your engine can overheat and it'll go to here. But even on the hottest days, it never really overheats unless you fiddle with the um, settings of the weather. And these dials, I'm not really sure what they do, but I don't really think they actually have a physical use. 
So you don't really have to worry about those. It's just these three that you have to worry about. Just, you know, although I'm saying that you don't really have to worry about them. Unless it's a cold day or a hot day, you don't really need to worry about either of these. So in standard conditions, you don't really have to worry about them. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to bring back the steering wheel. Um, I'm going to sort of teach you guys sort of the general gist of driving the bus. So I'm going to take the handbrake off. I don't see if I press the D key to put it into drive. As you can see, the bus will now just start, you know, driving along happily. If you sort of give it some, if you press the accelerator a little bit. So yeah, I'll say driving the bus is the easy bit. But the next thing you're probably going to want to do is start picking up passengers. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drive around in, you know, I'm just going to drive around the block, basically. So as you can see. Um, there are certain settings you can change by default, which I basically have. Um, you have um, AI collisions turned off, so as you can see, you can pretty much clip through anything. Like nothing is a solid structure. This isn't a solid structure. Like cars aren't solid structures, buildings aren't. So you can just drive infinitely in any direction, really. Now the problem is with you, the only thing you can't really hit is pedestrians. As you can see, it gives you this error message: crash. You have knocked over a pedestrian. You have lost exceeded more than five kilometers per hour. So it does, you know, use the European units, which is kilometers per hour. And it says your pedestrian was hurt seriously, and, and it will add it to your personal file. Which, as you know, when you first start the game, you do have to create a personal file. But I'm not going to get into that for the purposes of this video. So as you can see, I'm just going to drive around the block and come back. And then I'll be right back to show you guys how all the scheduling works and how to start picking up your first passengers. Now before I do that guys, there is one last thing I want to talk about. And that is the sun, and when the sun's low in the sky, you know, you can get dazzled pretty easily. So what you can do is you actually have a sun visor. So sort of take it down to the appropriate level of where you want it. Now, normally you wouldn't really need it this low, because as you can see, you can't really see out of the window. So what you want to do is get it to the appropriate level that you want, and then you sort of, uh, you can click this button here and it will you know, attract it back up, and you, you can then put it into the position you want, so you say you want it there or there, whatever position you want, but bear in mind you just clip this, it'll go back up, and then it will stop it sort of falling down, so as you can see, if I put it back up now, it will just keep falling back down again, so you pull it on this, and that will stop it falling back down. Okay guys, so I just want to clarify before I go any further, that yes I'm on a different map, and I'm on a completely different bus, so if you guys would like to download this map, it is the Cottable version 3, and this is the bus which came with the actual map, and it recommended that we use this one, um, which is the very reason I'm using it. I will leave a link in the description below to the thread which I downloaded it from, and if you guys would like a tutorial on how to install it, it is almost a drag and drop process. Well, I suppose with this map, uh, and with, if you're using this bus, it is a straight drag and drop process. But yeah, I just figured I'd show you on this map, not just because it is um, its um, right-hand drive, which... I think just make it a little bit more interesting, but the reason I'm showing you on this map is it is a lot simpler in, in the terms. It's a very small map, it's very condensed, and it means that setting up a line is much simpler. So what you can do first of all is you can press on this arrow key here, and what it will now bring up is it will bring up arrows all over the map now, sort of telling you where to go. So for example, um, I do apologise, I keep sort of clipping the building, but if I go here. Notice that now it's telling me what the name of the location is, and it's telling me how to get to the other stop. Luckily, there's only two main stops, the bus station and the university on this map. So I'm going to show you how to set up a bus line between the two locations. On the original map, I figured there's loads of different locations, and it becomes a really big pain trying to sort them out. So what you can do is, first of all, you need to pick a line on what you're going to want to do. So the, the only line on this is the um, U18 line. And you can either pick from here or here. So, just because I'm, you know, doing a tutorial on this map, this is the one I'm going to leave for you to download. This is also where we are. We're at the bus station waiting point, and we're going to the University of Cottawal Terminus. So this is the line we want, and I'm going to select it by clicking OK. So it'll, you may get this thing saying your display number is going to be withdrawn. All that means is it's just, you know, it's giving you a new display number. So also your number on the bus is going to change. So what you, what you can then do is go into here, and the line you can pretty much leave blank, but the terminus, we you can basically set it to whatever you want. So you can set it to not in service, or basically whatever ones apply. Obviously our bus isn't, you know, it is in service, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to change it to the 
um, university, so University of Cotterwall. And there you go, so now the, the front of the bus has changed and it tells, it's telling me we're on the University of Cotterwall. I'm not really sure what the line does, if I'm honest. Um, it just pretty much puts a number there. I'm not really sure if it affects the, the thing at all, but just in case it does, I'm going to leave it blank. So I'd adv advise you guys to pretty much do the same. If it does affect the, you know, if you do any testing, let me, let um, me know in the comments below. So yeah, so... The bus is started and ready to go. I have, you know, popped up this window, and it actually tells you where you need to be. So as you can see, it's telling me on the route that my delay is um, minus 2.3 minutes. So I'm, so I'm ahead of schedule by 2.3 minutes. So for this map in particular, I do happen to know that it is... I don't really need to wait here because no one really gets on here. So you can, if you have AI clipping off, which I do, you can either choose to really follow the traffic laws, or you can pretty much just drive through things. But you can, of course, have the problem of um, when you're driving. Like your passengers will complain if your driving isn't to a high enough standard. So I'm not really sure what's happened here. Like the map can sometimes glitch. So I think what I'm actually going to do is I'm actually going to drive through the cars because I have AI clipping off. I'm probably going to clip in, yep, I thought that would happen, so yeah, obviously if you do hit passengers, do remember that that can happen. Obviously, I'm not the best at this sort of game, but yeah, I'm just going to sort of be telling you sort of how to then manage your route. And just for, just for something to tell you guys, I, when I first started playing the game, I did completely forget um, to, you know, when I did the line, I completely forgot to actually change the line on the front of the bus. So just to bear in mind that... If you have one of these things on, people will get on to your bus regardless of like what's going on. And if you don't have that on the front, no one will get on your bus because they, they don't know where you're going. So yeah, I do happen to know that the, the occasionally when when this is up, it won't automatically update. So bear that in. Well, it will, but it sometimes can be a bit slow. So I I know that the bus station Bay Seven is my basically my first stop on the Cotterwall line. So as you can see, the the way you really know what, that your bus is ready is people will start adjusting, so I can see they'll move to get sort of near the bus when I came on here. So I'm going to click door open. On this bus there is no lock um, that you need to engage. But yeah, bear in mind now that with some of the custom buses you don't necessarily have um, a, a lock or anything to actually put on the doors. But, you know, it is quite a common practice that to get into the habit of if you are starting the game. I'm just mainly going on a custom map just because I figured it would be easy to demonstrate the mechanics of the game. So everyone's now on and you want to keep your delay, I personally like to keep it around this. So I'm just going to put the hazards on just to indicate I'm reversing and I do want to point out, yes again I'm not the best driver so if I do crash like, oh my god I've made a catastrophic, catastrophic mistake here, which you know mistakes do happen. So I'm not necessarily going to keep into the traffic laws, but as you can see, that was a good demonstration. As you can probably hear all the talking in the background, there's never a good thing when you hear lots of complaining. That was probably because I crashed or clipped the curbs. People are very picky. Now bear in mind, if your driving isn't adequate, bear in mind that people will start getting annoyed and they will they can actually leave the bus before they get to where they want to go, which is never really great. But I think after I get to my next stop, which is Mavis Street, so as you can see, I'm going to the university, and the thing is with, like, the bigger maps, there are multiple arrows telling you to go to different locations. So just to just bear that in mind, guys. And so don't get led by the wrong arrows, is what I'm saying. But luckily this map only has one, two, has, only has one line, which makes it very simple to do. Now, I don't want to know what it is by default, but I think for mine it's the pipe key, and then you engage the station brake. And basically what that means is it's kind of like a handbrake. I'm not necessarily sure that all buses have them. But it's quite helpful if you're just pulling into a bus station like I have mine here. So yeah. I'm also going to talk about the stopping thing. So you can, unlike a lot of bus simulators, it is realistic in the fact that... Um, so if I just press the F2 button, as you can see the stop... You hear that sort of ding noise. It is realistic in the fact that you won't have to stop at every single stop. 
unlike quite a lot of bus simulators. So, so as much as it is a bit indie, it is quite realistic in that kind of sense. In the fact that, you know, you don't have to go every stop, and, you know, people will sort of, you know, get on and off at different stops, really. So it is quite really realistic in that fact. See, I've, I've already talked about the air conditioning and stuff, so I think all I can really do now is show you guys a bit of gameplay on what to do. So, yeah. Um, obviously, I did do a bit of harsh braking there, and that it obviously is an indication that I'm driving the bus a bit wrong. So, obviously, if I keep doing that, you know, consistently, my passengers will start getting annoyed, and they will all basically just leave, which, obviously, when you're driving a bus, is never really a good thing. One thing to talk about, this is a little bit of, it's not really an important detail, but quite a lot of buses do have this sort of side window that you can, as you can see, sort of open and close the which I did there. So just bear in mind that not every bus has the same features, guys. Like this, I think certain buses like have sort of like um, kneeling options. So if you notice that like when some buses pull into stations, they sort of can l sort of level one half of the suspension. So say people in wheelchairs and stuff can get on. So, so some buses do have certain features like that, that you can do. I've also driven some buses that have like some fairly um, like neat lighting and stuff that you can do. So yeah. Different buses, of course, will have different features. So as you can see, this is an, there's another bus stop. Any bus stop you basically meet along your route. So as you can see, this is U18, which is us. And they're going to open the doors. Uh, you will also need to stop at them if there are people there, or if someone presses the stop button. Which, as you can see, someone did. Now, on this particular bus, I believe is a bit glitched. So as you can see, that guy, for some reason, is just standing there in the aisle and is not actually, you know, sitting down on a seat. But yeah, I think what I'm going to do, guys, is I'm going to pause the video, and once I get closer to my terminus, I'm then going to resume the video and show you guys what to do there. So as you can see, guys, we are, you know, now nearly here. We are based, we are almost at the university. So as you can see, as you can see, no one has actually pressed stop. So I can just go straight by the stop and, you know, not have to stop there, which I'm going to be honest, going to be honest, in most bus sims, they would generally make you do it. So as you can see, I'm just going to indicate to sort of tell the drivers I'm going down here. Now, something that I have noticed is AIs don't really seem to be affected by what you do as a player. So as you can see, if you press the H key that will sound the horn, it doesn't really seem to affect other drivers, which is something I have actually noticed, guys. But anyway, in is the general gist of sort of how to play the game, you know, how to stop the bus, you know, sort of how to go about. Some buses, as you can see, do have different interiors. This is one of the modded buses that I, well, not modded in, but it's one of the ones that I downloaded into the game that I could sort of play around. So you can get custom maps, so you aren't just limited to the general map. So as you can see, someone has pressed stop, and now the people are walking down the aisle towards the actual stop. Well, towards the front of the bus. But as you can see, you know, I am pretty much at the university. It's a fairly steep hill, so I'm going to be honest, the bus does go fairly slowly up the hill. But yeah, some buses do have different starting procedures though, for example, the electricity on some buses. When you push that pin down, which you saw me do earlier, there is a button sometimes next to it that you have to press and sometimes do. But as a rule, you just push the pin down for the electricity. And most of the old buses, at least on the original OMSI content, it's fairly universal, so don't worry about loads of every bus being different. They're fairly universal. Even the vending buses, the single deckers, every bus is fairly universal, if I'm honest. So as you can see, I'm now just pulling into the final stop. And notice my delay. I purposely kept it up to minus 4.1. And I'm just going to stop now. I'm just going to put on the handbrake, and I'm going to open the doors. And as you can see, you basically now get a report to see how you did. So as you can see, it does tell you whether you were too early or too late to all the stops. So as you can see, I was okay for these ones, okay for these ones, and too early for most of them. So it basically tells you the difference between when you arrive them, at them. So as you can see, these are the stops that I was able to go straight by. That it doesn't actually have any sort of arrival difference. This was the first one I went to, so of course there's not going to be any sort of difference between it. It tells you, you know, when you departed from those stops, and when you were planned to. So as you can see here, I was definitely too early and left the stops way too early. If you were too early, if you stop at one of the stops, you can stop there, say, for a minute or something. You have to catch up some of the time. Or what you can do is you can go to one of the features down here, 
and you can actually um, stop, you can change the time settings. So when you have a multiple schedule, you can't change the time backwards, but you can change it forward if you are ridiculously too early for, for one of your schedules. You can also, before I end the video, I'm also going to talk about here. So say your bus isn't starting, so I'm just going to stop the engine. So say your battery is too low or something, or you're having problems like that. So I do apologise for the background noise in the game. There are a lot of people getting off the bus, it, it appears. So I think he's the final... Nope, there's more people on the roof by the looks of it. Oh my god, there's a lot of people. Anyway, so I'm just going to ignore those people getting off the bus. There seems to be a considerable lot of them. No wonder the bus was going so slow. But, um, so your bus isn't starting, say you haven't had a battery or anything like that. You can click on this spanner button, and what it should do is it should either start your bus for you, or what, what it can do is... Um, it can, so if your bus is startled, so say like mine, so I'm going to turn it off and I press the spanner button, and um, what it sometimes does, it doesn't do it on all the buses, so this bus isn't compatible with it, for example, but some can, um, it can start the bus for you, you know, it is a bit cheaty, like I said, it's not designed to be like a full-on game or anything, like that you can, you know, play around and have a proper campaign and stuff, it's just designed to be a bit of a sandbox kind of indie game. So... Like I said, I'm going to leave a link in the description to both maps I've got, to this map that I've got, and, you know, the bus, which is included in the download. It's included in the thread if you want to go and download it. So I just want to quickly quick talk about these buttons. So this button here, this is if you want, I'm just going to cancel my schedule here, because it's wanting me to, it thinks, it still thinks I'm doing the schedule which I'm doing, even though I just did. Even though I'll just complete the schedule. So this is if you wish to switch buses to a different one, if you wish to change this out for a different one. This is if you want to destroy the bus that you're in, and this is if you want to change the location of it. So say you want to put it down on a different bit of the map. So say I want to go back to the, to the bus station or any of the, of the other places, I can do that fairly easily. And this is if you want a CPU to take over control of your bus. And if you're on a route and if you're bored of it, you can let an AI take control of it. And this is if you want to switch between keyboard or whether you wish to, you know, play with the with a gaming wheel, which I think is fairly interesting. And this is if you wish to call the police if there's a certain incident that's happened. And this is if you wish to sort out your fuel. But I believe as a rule, your fuel, you don't really use that fuel unless you turn that on as an option. So yeah, I believe I've about covered everything, guys. If there is anything in particular I have missed... Um, all I can really say is that some buses, like I said, do have different startup procedures, especially for modded ones, like, um, I know some National Express coaches that I was driving did have some different startup procedures, but as a rule, it does, it is fairly linear. Like, when you're playing, as you can see when I did this, you saw me start the bus and everything, I, I didn't fiddle around with the air conditioning or anything, I just set off and then I went off on my journey. And no one really got off, off the bus because of my dodgy driving or anything, which I'm actually quite surprised about because my driving is awful. And yeah, I really need to learn the driving. But yeah, that's pretty much everything, guys. If there is anything I have missed, like, besides the cashier, which is said that I'm not really going to cover because it doesn't really play that big of a factor into motion of the routes. So yeah, I believe that's about everything, guys. Like I said, if there's anything I haven't covered, you know, feel free to drop a comment down below for something you're unsure about. I'll try and get back to you as soon as possible, but obviously I'm at college, so I may not get back to you as soon as possible. Like, very, like, you know... In a really quick time frame, but hopefully within a week or so, I should be able to get back to you if you guys have any questions. If there's anything I've missed yet, feel free to comment it down below, and I will clarify anything that you are unsure about. So yeah, thank you for watching, guys. I hope you've enjoyed. If you have learned, you know, something and you've if I have actually taught you, you know, the basics of OMSI, obviously there are a lot more features you can do. Um, but obviously this is just the basics. So yeah, thank you for watching, guys. Hope you've enjoyed. Goodbye from Pete and Plum.